Welcome to Reactions Between Ions and Solution. In this lesson, we're going to look at how ions interact in aqueous solutions. That is to say, solutions where water is a solvent. Before we begin, it's important to realize or remember that ions in solution typically come from the dissociation of an ionic compound. Here we have a picture of a tablespoon of salt, NaCl. Now, this is represented as a solid, but if we add water to it, we know that table salt is going to dissolve, and we represent that with NaCl AQ. This AQ symbol, aqueous, telling us it's dissolved in water. Now the point of this is that we know that soluble ionic compounds dissociate in water. So this NaCl AQ is not really one molecule altogether. It is actually Na plus ions and Cl minus ions in the water. These are free ions in the water. And we also write these as aqueous because these ions are dissolved in water. Keep this idea of ionic compounds dissociating in mind when we look at a reaction between two aqueous solutions. Here we have two aqueous solutions, one containing lead nitrate and the other containing sodium iodide. These are both solutions made by dissolving ionic compounds in water. When they are added together, you can clearly see that a new product forms. This bright yellow precipitate comes out of the reaction. We would commonly represent what happens in this reaction with this equation. This shows lead nitrate plus sodium iodide reacting to form lead iodide and sodium nitrate. Let's start by looking at some of the information that's presented in this equation. First of all, we can see that the two reactants are aqueous. Both lead nitrate and sodium iodide are labeled as aqueous. We can also see that one of the products is solid. This PVI2, the lead iodide, is solid. So this was our yellow precipitate. This is the precipitate that formed. We can also see that there's a second product formed, and that should make sense because this is a double replacement reaction. Now the way we represent this reaction, this form of the equation, is the one that we've been using all year. And this is called a molecular equation because it shows all of the reactants and products written as molecules. Each one of these is written as a neutral compound or molecule. However, we just saw that that's not accurate, that many of these compounds, these soluble ionic compounds, do not exist as molecules. In water, they dissociate instead. So we should represent that somehow. We know that this first compound, lead nitrate, becomes one lead ion and two nitrate ions. We also know that this sodium iodide is going to dissociate into two sodium ions and two iodide ions. The first product, PVI2, is not going to dissociate because it's not aqueous. This was a precipitate. This came out of the solution, out of the reaction, because it was insoluble. So we will leave this one alone. But the second product, sodium nitrate, is also aqueous, so it's soluble, and we would show that as two sodium ions and two nitrate ions. Now all of these ions we just wrote out that came about as a result of these compounds dissociating, these are all aqueous as well. So we want to write in that notation, like so. So if we were to read through what this equation says now, it says that a lead ion plus two nitrate ions plus two sodium ions plus two iodide ions yields this insoluble product, PBI2, plus two sodium ions, and two nitrate ions. What we've just written out is referred to as the complete ionic equation because it keeps track of all the ions that exist in the reaction. One of the first things that may come to mind when looking over this complete ionic equation is that there's lots of information present. Probably more than we need, so we can actually narrow this down. Specifically, we can see that a couple ions show up in the same state on both sides of the equation. We have two NO3 minus ions on this side, and we also have two NO3 minus two nitrate ions on the product side. We also have two sodium ions on the reactant side that show up the same way on the product side. Notice how these pairs of ions are identical on both sides. We call these spectator ions. So the nitrate and the sodium ions we call spectator ions. 
we call these spectator ions because they don't really take part in the reaction. And that should make sense because they show up on the product side exactly the same as they looked on the reactant side at the start of the reaction. So one of the useful things we can do is eliminate these spectator ions and rewrite the equation. So now if I eliminate those spectator ions out and I rewrite what's left over, I'm going to have Pb2 plus this ion plus two iodide ions yields PBI2, my insoluble precipitate. And we call this the net ionic equation. And this net ionic equation does two things. It highlights the actual equation taking place, and it also generalizes the reaction, meaning that any source of lead ions combined with any other source of iodide ions will give you this particular reaction product. So to recap how to get to the net ionic equation, you start with a molecular equation and you rewrite any substances that are aqueous, that are labeled aqueous. We rewrite them as a combination of their ions. Once we've done that, we look to see if there are any ions that show up the same on the reactant and product sides. Those are the spectator ions and we eliminate them. We rewrite what's left over and we get our net ionic equation that highlights the actual reaction taking place. That wraps up our lesson on reactions between ions and solution. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.